Good existence, citizens of the universe. I'm J.D. Nicholas Jensen Denton, the creator of the Pharmacopoeia. Today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the importance of the entourage effect in uh, uh, Salix Alba Bark extracts and how to achieve that specifically because, um, well, this is all part of the revolution to me of uh, collective humanity's advent into uh, consciousness, I guess you could say, and what that really means is the Pentecost upon humanity. And a part of that whole process to me is just returning back to nature and understanding the natural laws and working in accordance with them. And this has led me down the path of alchemy, really, and ultimately plant medicine and now medicinal plant chemistry, which I am studying and I would like to break down a little bit to you so that I could show you the connections between the archaic and... Um, the, between the archaic past and the ancient truths and modern science. And we might be able to merge these two seemingly opposing perspectives into one overarching theory, perceptual framework, we'll call it. And how am I going to do that? Well, I'm just going to tell you how I understand it. Very quickly, I'm going to try to keep this under five minutes Let's go. Put me down in the corner. There I am. All right. So within alchemy, which is arguably the world's oldest and still extant um, medicinal plant practice and history, you have what the alchemists referred to as a perfect sublimation, which meant the, the complete lifting up of quintessential components of different forms of matter to evolve what they perceived as the soul, the collective uh, force of life present in the universe and all things. They referred to this as the great work of raising up the soul the holy science of raising the soul. Some have come to call it. Um, as a part of this, um, we call this now like polypharmacy or multi-target therapy, as it says here, which just means using um, more than one drug, more than one compound to work together or synergetically with other compounds to achieve a more, well, let's not say more. It's not more or less. I'm trying to get out of this binary thinking, but to achieve a, That's all. to just achieve the, the intended effect of plant medicines. And so basically, Multi-target therapy is a, they say new, it is an ancient therapy concept which tries to treat diseases with a multi-drug combination, again also known as polypharmacy, in a more casually directed manner. Physicians practicing phytotherapy recognized very early that a greater efficacy can be achieved with the application of a combination of plant extracts than with a usually high-dosed monodrug, especially in our instance, aspirin, which uses high dosages of salicylic acid in an artificially modified form from an less than uh, ecologically sustainable source. See my lecture about the whole thing, please. Two-part lecture. God damn the Rockefellers and the and the other Illuminati is going on right here. Um, they noticed, these physicians practicing phytotherapy, noticed that this therapy concept of uh, multi, multi-target therapy, I guess, we're talking, we're talking sublimed medicine, though. We're talking entourage. We're talking about medicine, which contains an entourage of constituents of multiple plants or multiple essences of one plant combined together to achieve a synergy or a syntrophy 
in which would be more effective than the mono drug. And so they notice this therapy concept at the same time has the advantage of reducing or eliminating side effects due to the lower doses of the single compounds or drug components within the extract mixtures. Results of the synergy, okay, they put the results into equations for you math-minded folks. This was a study specifically on coffee and willow bark, and they found that indeed there was synergetic interaction between the coffee constituents, specifically chlorogenic acid, nicotine, and salicin, and, um, excuse me, salicin is not in coffee, salicin is in salix alba, the tree from the bark. At any rate, they found that there is a complementary effect between these two plants in achieving the therapeutic uh, results that they were looking for. Um, I'm going to source all these articles below. You can definitely read about them at the website. And one thing I'd like to say further is that the reason we need a complete entourage, the reason we need the complete entourage is can be specific for every medicine. Like there's sometimes there are things in medicine. This is why we have the preparations is because you cannot just eat the bark straight off the tree. You can't just, there are some plants you can't eat, but through the process of fermentation or distillation or sublimation, these can become medicinal. What is toxic becomes medicinal and what is non-nutritious or tasty becomes those things. And so specifically with willow bark, we found that we found that the efficacy of the extract in the in in the treatment of pain has been attributed modernly to the content of salicin and its derivatives, meaning the salicylic acid mostly. And pro drugs, pro drugs uh, is basically a term that means. Um, Let's see if I can get the salicylic acid up here real quick. Prodrug is just a word. This is salicylic acid. Um, if this hydrogen was removed here and then a counterbalanced charge like a sodium ion came in here and was ionically bound to that oxygen, that would be considered a prodrug. Anything that is counterbalanced and has a sort of equilibrium and inter an intramolecular equilibrium, which balances out the stability of the electronegativity. Um, but there are other, there are other compounds in the, the willow bark, which contributes to the overall effect. And so that's what the study was looking at. And they said, they said, however, based on clinical experience, like however, after um, the attribution to salicin, they're attributing it to salicin, but they're investigating this attribution, which seems to be culturally dependent. They said, however, based on clinical experience and the evidence of experimental pharmacological studies, the fraction of salicin cannot satisfactorily explain the clinical efficacy of willow bark. In addition, salicins and their metabolites lack the acetylating potential of acetyl salicylic acid, which is, again is the artificial uh, form of salicylic acid, salicylic acid, otherwise known as aspirin. And they must therefore possess a different mechanism of action. Okay, all in vivo and in vitro models, that's in an organism and in a cellular dish, that's pretty good evidence if you ask me. All in vivo and vitro models studied pointed to relevant contributions of the fraction of polyphenols and flavonoids. The single compounds or combinations responsible for the effects remain to be elucidated. And so they found significant contributions of therapeutic effects that is relative to the polyphenols and the flavonoids. And as I talk further about down here, the tannins as well, all of which are highly soluble in water. The polyphenols, the proanthocyanidins, and the flavonoids identified as fractions contributing to the efficacy of willow bark. 
further research should be done to identify the constituents or combinations. Um, polyphenols such as flavonoids, parenthesanins, also seem to contribute to effects of willow bark if they're too not used therapeutically. So drugs that are not typically used therapeutically contribute to the collective efficacy of the primary specialized metabolite, salicylic acid. How it works, they don't know, but they've proven beyond reasonable doubt that can be displayed through via an equation that these uh, extra extracurricular, these, these minor secondary components of the willow bark are essential in the total medicinal quality of the medicine. And so we see this especially here as well when they're looking at the phenolic compounds specifically. And I was just looking at this article to see what the reactions were in water, like what happens in water, what happens in alcohol, what happens when it's exposed to air. There are a lot of reactions that are constantly taking place. Like a molecule is never simply just a molecule. It's a lot of, a lot of different stuff is happening in there in order to understand a holistic top-down understanding of it as the alchemists were and as the scientists wish to do, then we must, we must look at these not as a monodrug and more as a, a, a matrix of interacting components which all point in a general direction, okay? That's how I look at these. That's how the alchemists looked at these. They've got behaviors, but they're all unique at the very same time. Um, this paper is basically just saying that the medicinal constituents are also present in the leaves and that we should not neglect the leaves of the tree as we have for the other one. This is another study just talking about uh, as a randomized placebo, double blind controlled clinical trial. That means they tested them on humans. They had placebos and it was a double blind. That's more than a single blind. It's like, I'm not gonna say infallible because it depends on what you're doing, but it's a very good science to have a double blind placebo controlled study. And what they found is that there were no, not really any adverse effects and that there were significant differences in the overall treatment of people treated with simply the extract. Um, but how were these extracts made? I believe in this one they used a 70% ethanolic extract or that was over here actually um yeah that was this one they used 70 percent and so that's important because like why 70 percent who chose 70 how do you know you're going to get all the effective compounds out of there that you need oh this is the one no serious side effects were reported with will extracts up to eight weeks take a moment to read these over at your own leisure i think they're worth the read but we've got a lot of evidence to go on the fact that we can use these arcs in water and in coffee and alone and achieve therapy from them but it's all just really important because the single compounds are not totally effective. It is the multitude, the multitude of compounds which we must relieve from the plant matrix before we can have a truly therapeutic, higher quality medicine, higher quality of life, higher quality of being of evolution of getting closer to nature a more direct connection to the nature of reality and of ourselves um, phytochemicals from will willow bark possessed hydrophilic character meaning they are good in water 
And basically anything that's like you can dissolve in water, you can probably drink. If you can't dissolve it in water, you don't want to drink it. They also demonstrate good thermostability. But again, that doesn't go for everything across the board. But just generally speaking, water is a universal solvent of life. And it's a good indicator that something may or may not be bioavailable. It has found that the active it has been found that the biologically active compounds contained in analyzed raw materials interact with each other, thus affecting their their activity. There was some antagonism with respect to the ABTS radical neutralizing capacity. So there was a little bit of oxidative um, activity. Uh, when mixed with coffee, ABTS is it, it is a test to determine um, antioxidizing power. But other determinations performed synergistic interaction between the active compounds, the coffee extract, and the individual willows was observed. So coffee and willow, white willow together, um, is a good choice. Obtained results indicate that extracts from willow bark tested Salix genotypes as an ingredient in coffee beverages can provide health promoting benefits to the consumers. However, this issue requires further study. It's like, and oftentimes in science, it's easy to observe something, but to determine the actual mechanism of action is much, much more difficult. Now, the question arises, how do we get this uh, total sublimation, this perfect entourage? How do we get a complete extraction of all of the medicinal compounds, which all contribute to the, to the effectiveness of the whole tincture? Well, first thing you got to do is you got to look up the solubility of the compounds you want. Of course, I did that in two places, one being PubChem right here. This is a great resource if you want to learn stuff about compounds and other medicinal things, I'm sure you all know. Um, we go down here to where I was, the solubility. We've got melting point solubility, and it tells us salicylic acid, the main compound, soluble in oil, alcohol, and ether. Doesn't give us any exact numbers in water, 2,240 milligrams per liter. Um, that doesn't, that's not a lot. 2.24 milligrams per milliliter soluble. 0.2 grams in 100 milliliters. All right, well, this other source over here says the ethanol, or that it's 2.2 milligrams per milliliter. So those two are correct, are aligning, that it's not very soluble in water. And so if you want salicylic acid, you do not want a water dominant extract. You want some water because that's where the tannins, the flavonoids, and the polyphenols are. But you want mainly ethanol because the solubility is order magnitude, orders of magnitude higher in ethanol than it is in water. But again, again, all of this, all of this study was done in aqueous extracts. So we need both of them. We need both. And so I just use all that information to put together a, a, a solvent. This isn't the Philosopher's Stone, but it is a 80% uh, alcohol hydroethanolic ratio, which I'm using to retain the essence of willow bark. And you can use this extract in your in your coffee too, if you'd like. Now, yeah, this is um, this is the revolution today. This is about balance, okay? This is ultimately just helping us get in touch with ourselves and get balance with ourselves. It's not just about the medicine. It's not just about the stuff we're using or the tools, although they are incredibly important. What is my time out here? Doesn't even matter. 20 minutes, perfect. So, yeah, this is about peace. This is about balance. This is about connecting the hemispheres of the brain. This is about transcending the physical perceptual limits. This is about transcending physical 
reality, its desires, its temptations, and recognizing that within us we have the infinite. Within us we have the source of all matter. Within us we have God and the kingdom of heaven. And that the more we are looking outside of ourselves for these truths, the more we will turn away from them that are within us, from those which are within us. And that's like we're a, we're like a gyroscope coming out of balance and we're on this bop. You know, it's like a thing that spins around and it's either usually straight planar or when it comes unbalanced, it goes whoop, 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 and it gets a whop to it. And that can be very detrimental to our state of being. That can cause many different effects within the phenomenologically obvious experience, you know the felt immediate presence of the moment health the foundation of health and wellness is chemical equilibrium that means balance in the world the foundation of expansion is balance the foundation of reality is balance and so we're trying to find balance within ourselves this being the catalyst to enlightenment and um that's how i think uh, willow bark extracts, spagyrics especially. I mean, I didn't even really talk about spagyrics. I just talked about white willow. But that's how I believe plant medicine can help bring us closer to something greater. Okay, now I'm going to read this chapter from the Bible that just just poked out of me. I'm not a biblical man, but I do love some holy literature. 2 Corinthians um, 11. Finally, brothers, sisters, mothers and fathers, rejoice, mend your ways, encourage one another, agree with one another, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the holy ones greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Amen. Frank, let me just clear some up right now while I got like another minute. Um, I was like, eh, on the Holy Jesus Lord Christ thing because it's like, you know, the real OG is the nameless one, which you cannot put a label or title on. He remains unnamed. And so anytime, I think, anytime somebody's out there trying to put a new name on it, then um, that's another red flag because you can't put a name on it. And if you don't know that, if you don't know yet that you can't put this reality into words that you can't put unity into words or god into language especially an individual name let alone a three-letter word i don't even like using the word god because it's just like scrambles people's brains but i'm just very suspect of anybody else trying to put a name on it because we know you can't put a name on it but if you know i know you know and you know i know because it's just a vibe it's telepathy and we're just using these words to try to steer our ships and our sails in the right direction and so with all that you know that's all what i'm doing i urge you to um be great and have a grand existence